Hey, this is Jason Reeves of 133 Art, and I'm on Nerd Soul, and this is Rock the Spot. Um, I am Jason Reeves of 133 Art, and I make comic books, if you want to boil it down. We have a couple titles, uh, One Nation, uh, Kid Carvers, uh, Foo Fighters, and uh, very soon, a uh, comic called Retcon. Um, man, I've loved comics since I was a little kid. Superheroes, anything that flies, you know, I was on it. Cartoons, anything. So when I was 10, uh, I started going to a comic shop that was close to my house called The Bookworm. And uh, I bought, with my own money, my first comic books. And I think the first thing, the first thing I read was X-Men Classic. And you know, Chris Claremont, John Byrne, um, killing it. I think it was Hellfire Club, like that saga around that time. And uh, I just fell in love with them, man. I was like, there's, there's these books that you can read, you know, I tell my mom, and, and they're just like cartoons, except for, you know, they're in the, you know, you can go back and read them. Because cartoons, you know, back in the day, there was no streaming. There was no, you know, once it was on that Saturday morning, done. You may never see it again. So. Um, comics were something that I could keep, and that's why I loved them so much. Um, and then after that, I bought like Spider Man, I think it was 341. That was the first comic I ever purchased with my own money, and Robin Number One at the same time, um, Tim Drake Robin. And ever since then, man, I, I would take books home, trace them, and everything. And that's what got me in the comics. That's what made me really fall in love with comics. Ever since then, that's all that I've wanted to do. Pseudo realistic, I want to say. Um, I can flip and do like a cartoony style, like I do for Kid Carvers, but for the most part, I'm kind of like a, in the, I guess, wherever you would place like a Jim Lee or like a, a J. Scott Campbell kind of pseudo realistic style. I've been drawing like almost my entire life. Um, I used to doodle at the kitchen with my mother and uh, I got started drawing with her and then as I moved through like school you know when you're in in elementary school and everybody's drawing Ninja Turtles or, or like uh, Batman had came out when when I was in uh, when I was in school uh, the Tim Tim Burton and uh, we used to draw because Batman that was the first time we ever see, saw Batman in like that black costume and that was like so inspiring to us and that crazy awesome Batmobile. So we were like, man, we're gonna draw this. And we used to have competitions drawing. And there was this one kid, Michael, who was like my rival. And we used to create comics, these like crossover comics, like Ninja Turtles and Batman versus Superman and the Flash and stuff like that. Um, so that's what really kind of kept me going through school. Everybody knew me as like the guy who could draw. And uh, by the time I made it to high school, I applied to go to the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. And that's where I sort of had my first taste of like formal training uh, in art and illustration. So after that, um, I just kind of dove in to drawing my own comics and, and trying to sell them. One Nation is about Deacon Taylor, who is this soldier that's sort of harboring these secret, secret powers. Um, he's been, he's been kind of keeping them a secret for his entire life and his family has told him, you know, you can't be out in the world like that. They're gonna use you or they're gonna try to take you from us. So uh, fast forward to when he's about 19 years old, he's in uh, the first uh, desert storm and he's in the Middle East and his unit gets ambushed. And there's like no other alternative but for him to flip the switch on his abilities and save the, you know, his brothers in arms. So instantly, uh, with, with that flipping of the switch, he becomes the most famous person on earth. And he has to kind of navigate this overnight brand new world that everybody wants a piece of him. The government wants to use him, secret factions, and he also finds out that you know, he's not the only one like this. And there's other people who have designs on what he should do with these abilities as well, you know. Like, it's like, man, could you imagine if in one of these wars or one of these hot spots around the globe, if an American soldier like hoisted a tank, 
Like that'd be on CNN, that'd be the craziest thing we've ever seen. And he'd be like, what do we do now? Like what is the world, what does the landscape look like now after we find out that humans can do this? So that's essentially the beginning of what One Nation is about. Car so Carver's is our all ages book. Um, when I started having kids and we would go to all these conventions, there would be like these little kids that come up to the table and they're like, oh, you got anything for us? And you know, I was doing One Nation at the time and you know, my wife and I, Kimmy, my, also my business partner, we were like, man, we don't have anything to feed the kids with. Like kids want to read too. They want to see the artwork and have a good time at the shows too. So I was like, we got to create something like a book for the kids. And I've never, I had, up until that point, I hadn't done anything all ages. All my stuff was like 15 plus PG-13 kind of deals. So, um, sat down, created like an outline for it. And I just kind of thought back to like Saturday morning cartoons and like all the things that I would have liked superhero wise or sci-fi wise, but with children or as a kid. And uh, Kid Car that's how Kid Carvers came about. I was, and I was like, I want to do sci-fi. Like that's the bent of the book that I wanted to do. And I wanted to do little kids that are from New Orleans, where I'm from. And I wanted to have like something that calls back to uh, black science, like black inventors, you know, and that's a big part of the book. So I was like, we're going to name them after George Washington Carver, like that spirit of of genius, that spirit of, you know, that sort of can do, can fix, can create, can make engineering attitude. And uh, that's where we got the name from, Kid Carvers. I wanted these kids to exact have exactly that, the ingenuity. Like, I, I've done superheroes and, and, and we, we're, and not that I would ever move on from that, but for kids, um, I think, Having the ability, especially for kids where I'm from, New Orleans, having the ability to push forward through uh, through adversity um, was a big thing for us. And I feel like science is sort of our stepping stone a lot of times to uh, move forward. You know, uh, um, scientific method, you know, knowing how to deduce using deductive reasoning. Um, all of that stuff is sort of what you can use to get yourself out of, you know, whatever situation you might be. Maybe you're, you know, maybe you're poor. Um, maybe you have a learning disability. Any myriad of, any myriad of, of something that's holding you back, you can use science or you can use the, the sort of principles of science to get you out of that. And also, Science allows these kids in the story to do these amazing feats, which sort of harken back to being superhumans, right? Um, so I kind of wanted to say, you too can do this, especially if you're using science, because it's been done before. Science is a feat that humans have used to excel themselves in the past. So I just kind of wanted to open that door. On Kickstarter next month, uh, in, in, on February 13th, we are going to launch a project called Retcon. Um, it is our Afrofuturism sort of bent book. Um, we want to put some black folks in the future, in like this crazy whacked out sci-fi landscape. Um, what Retcon is about is this agency called the Retcon Agency. And they send their agents, oh, time travel exists, by the way. They send their agents back and forward through time to sort of attempt to repair it. But the, uh, there's a, they're, they're sort of boss. The thing that directs the agency is called the retcon engine. And the engine can see inconsistencies in time. In their time, time is fractured. There are these ruptures. The earth is sort of, you know, the universe is sort of dying. So they created this AI to catalog the rest of time and say, go here and fix this, go here and fix that. But the twist is that normally in a sci-fi movie or sci-fi show, you don't want to touch anything, you don't want to break anything, 
when you travel back through time. Well, the retcon AI is instructing them to break certain things. The tagline for it is uh, save the future, break the past. So uh, if you can uh, change enough things in the, in the past, then these ruptures in the future hopefully will repair themselves. And that's what the story is about. I don't know if it's a traditional approach or if it's a cliche approach, but I always take sort of something that I'm dying to do or something that I, that I, that I like or like if I see a really cool uh, book or movie or what have you, and I'm like, man, I, I wanna do something that's cool like that, you know? Like The Matrix inspired me a long time ago, and that's kind of what was the genesis of, of uh, One Nation. Like just that big, amped up uh, uh, team sort of story where everybody kind of gets together you know, the, the path of the few supports the path of the one kind of deal. And that's kind of like one of the issues in One Nation. Um, all that stuff kind of, I blend it together and then I create my own ideas. So I just get inspired by all the cool stuff around me, man. We're in like a renaissance of cool stuff right now. So um, I wouldn't call myself a traditional writer. Um, I am not the guy to sit there and meticulous, meticulously script everything. Um, I guess if I had to put myself in a box, I would say I'm like George Lucas. Like I'm an idea dude. Like I, I, I'll come up with some cool ideas and I'll collaborate with some cool cats like Al Ball or Robert Jeffrey II, you know, and, and, and like make some cool stuff. So I'm a Bible, I'm a Bible dude. Like I will sit there and write. So for One Nation, uh, I gave Al Vern this extensive outline. And Alvern would tell you, man, this dude is crazy because everything we write together, you know, if, if it's my idea, like if it's generated with me, I will write a long <laughs> drawn out outline that's, that's, you know, done for years, like it's years worth of stories. And, uh, and then I'll say, yo, give me a script, <laughs> you know? So, Alvern thinks I'm crazy. I, I would say he does. So, 133 Art is, we do comic production, but we're also a publisher. We publish all our own books. Um, we're also a printer, we print our own books. So, the business side is basically us uh, marketing and pushing ourselves, pushing our own product. The print side, we offer that to different clients, like indie clients and anybody basically who wants to make comics. We print floppy comics for the masses, right? Um, and that's been, uh, that's brand new, maybe about two, two and a half years old. And we've been uh, going strong uh, ever since we started, man. We've printed stuff like It's Not Out of the Wear Spider, uh, Project Wildfire, um, um, Swag Patrol, Power Knights, just all, f mostly indie creators at this point. Um, when I first started uh, One Nation in 2012, one of the big questions for us was, how are we gonna print this? How are we gonna get this product out to the masses? And we did a lot of research. My wife is like the real, like she's the business end of it, right? she was doing a whole lot of research on comic book printing and we found that it's more cost effective to just spend the bulk of money on the front end, get our own equipment, our own printing equipment, and do our own thing, right? So once we did that, we were forever our own printers. But a couple of years ago, uh, we were like, how could we expand that? And uh, the logical thing, the logical progression was to expand it into uh, indie comic book printing because there aren't a lot of indie comic book printers and there aren't a lot of affordable indie comic book printers. And by that time, we knew a little bit about the business. We knew how to print books affordably. Um, we knew how to do them fast so people can get them for shows. And I'm ensconced in the community. I know a lot of these guys. So I'm like, yo, if you need comics, man, come to us. You know, let's open this up and let's get you product for shows, product for shows. So um, that was kind of the reason why. Like, <laughs> I guess you could say we did it for the culture, you know? But um, 
we we were already doing it. So it was it was just the logical pro progression. I think I, I see a lot of my a lot of my peers who are looking for affordable printing, and I've been in those shoes. So I was like, let's open it up. Freedom, um, the ability to take a project from beginning to to market, and 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 push it on my own, which you know comes with its drawbacks and comes with its you know. Uh, comes with its rewards, but to be able to green light my own ideas or other people's ideas is uh, is like the best thing in the world. The comic industry uh, is still learning and growing into a more inclusive place, a more diverse place. And uh, when I started, it wasn't there yet. It wasn't even close to there yet, right? So I kind of had to kick my way into the comic book industry. And your basic comic uh, geek, comic nerd, comic fan doesn't necessarily know 133 Art. It's not a household name like, you know, your Marvels and your Images and your DC. So uh, we're still working at it. So there's So because there's that much work to do, we need people who are entrepreneurs who can give themselves the keys and Put our product out there into the market so um, people like me keith and jones at kid comics um you know uh, uh milton davis at mv media you know chuck jones with bounce and maia crown williams all these people uh working sort of autonomously but together and sort of creating our own little piece of uh of the comic book industry um, we're making headway, you know, I'm very proud of, uh, the work we've been doing. Like I've been, I've known about a lot of these people since maybe about 2012. Um, and they're all pushing forward. There's, there's nerd soul, you know, there's the blur girl and all these people who are sort of creating this space for entrepreneurs and black comics in general. So it's a, it's a pretty amazing thing. So yeah, to answer your question, entrepreneurship means getting our ideas out into the open where people can see them and that shows them where they can purchase them and consume them. It means freedom. I want them to say that that was the guy that sort of facilitated us getting our voice out into the comic book industry. I want my legacy to be that 133 Art came along, put its own ideas out, and helped everybody else sort of get their ideas out. You know, we produced amazing superhero sci-fi action adventure content, and not only did we do it for ourselves, but we helped everybody else along the way.